<laughs> Hello, everybody. How's it going today? Good. Oh, come on. I know you can do better than that. I'm standing here without legs. How's it going today? Good. There we go. There we go. I just want to say thank you so much to Ralph um, for bringing me over here from Los Angeles. I've been a little jet lagged, but I've been drinking a lot of coffee and a lot of tea. And I'm feeling ready and I'm feeling right. I just want to say thank you for giving me, giving me your time. I'm just going to tell you my story. Um, some, some of my journeys, some of my adversities, some of the challenges and obstacles that I faced in my life as a 30-year-old now trying to qualify for the Olympic Games, the Olympic Games, not Paralympics. I want to be the fastest man in the world, point blank period. So as I go along this journey, I hope you can take a little snippets of my life. I hope you can take a little snippets of my stories and apply it to your life and hopefully it help you moving forward. So with that being said, are y'all ready? Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. August 31st, 1989 was the day that I was born. So if you want to get me a birthday gift, we'll talk about it later, later on, okay. The doctors came in and rushed me out the room. I was born with a congenital birth defect, fibula hemimilia. So my legs didn't develop in the womb. My mother and father didn't know, and they rushed me out the room and took me to ICU. And the doctors had to come back and have this conversation with my mother and father. Mr. and Mrs. Leeper, I'm sorry, but your baby boy Blake was born missing both of his legs. And you have to understand, for my father, it was just me and my brother. So he was so excited. His son being born, he had the gloves and, and the basketball. And the doctors are coming in saying that he's never going to walk a day in his life. And you know what, you, might, you guys might want to find something that's not only easier for him to live life, but also for you guys, because he's going to be in a wheelchair. He's not going to play sports. And when my parents tell me this story, right, the day that I was born and the doctors gave me this terrible news, I get mad, right? I'm like, what? No way. Mom, what'd you say? Dad, who'd you hit? I know you hit a doctor. What's going on? And you know, they gave me the same answer over and over and over again. They said, Blake, yes, the day that you was born, they rushed you out the room, we was nervous. But the second they brought you back in the room, all the anxiety went away, right? Because we wasn't seeing what you was missing, we was focusing on what you had, right? And in that moment, we decided to do two things, right? The first thing, we're gonna stick together as a family, as a unit. Through the good, the bad, or the ugly, we're going to be behind your back and in your corner fighting for you. And the second thing, we're going to keep a positive attitude towards this whole situation. And as cliche as that might sound, that power of positivity has saved my life. It's like looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. My mom always told me every morning that I woke up, she said, Blake, yes, you have two disabilities. Yes but you have a thousand other abilities that makes you a special person. You have a thousand other abilities that allows you to wake up each and every day, put a smile in your face, and go and attack the world. One of my favorite quotes is from Coach Lou Holtz. He used to tell his football team, American football team, <laughs> and he used to say, life is 10% of what you're dealt with and 90% on how you deal with it. You look at my life and you look at my situation, the fact that I was born without legs, that's my 10%. There's nothing I can do about it. When I wake up in the morning, guess what? I'm not going to have my legs. When I go to bed at night, guess what, guys? My legs ain't going to be there. There's nothing that I could do about it. This is who I am. This is my life, right? But I still have 90% to show the world what I truly can do. I still have 90% to wake up each and every day and with the opportunity to fight, to keep pushing through. This is not my determination. This, is, this does not define me. Now, if you think about it, if I woke up in the morning, and I pour me a cup of coffee as the sun is rising up, I started complaining about how terrible this is. And, oh, woe is me. And this isn't fair, right? And it'd be valid to some people. They would understand. By the time the sun is rising up and the sun is coming back down for sunset, I would still be there complaining. I would still be there upset, talking about how unfair this is. Who have I helped? What have I got done? What have I accomplished? Nothing. 
So I choose the latter. I choose to accept my 10% and take the 90 and go and attack the world. I take my 90 and every day that I wake up, I say I'm going to walk. Every day that I wake up, I say I'm going to run. Every day that I wake up, I say I'm going to be the fastest man in the world. Point blank, period. Then, oh, thank you, thank you. And let's be honest, guys. I'm not going to stand up here and, and say, you know what? If you keep a positive attitude and you stick together as a family, life will be great. That's not true. <laughs> we know that. Because sometimes life hits you hard. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. And it gets harder. I remember a time when I was about five years old, four or five years old, and I was playing baseball with my team. It was called T-ball for a little team. And on this, on this team in this season, I wanted to do one thing, and that was to hit a home run. Right? If I could hit a home run and go around the bases, my teammates would accept me. They would cheer for me. My, and my father, he was the coach on the team. So I, they not only told me that I would never walk around, but they told him. So if I did and I hit this home run, we'd prove them wrong. Right? So I remember like, like it was yesterday, I walk up to the plate and I take my three practice swings. Right? One, two. And on the third one, I hit the ball as far as I can. The ball starts flying. I get so excited, I forget to run. Right? I'm just like... And my teammates are like, run, Blake, run, run. So I'm on my way to first base, right? And on my way to first, to second, I look over to my teammates and they're cheering for me. They're yelling, ah, and this is, this is it. This is the moment. I look over to my father on third base and he's jumping up and down. He's screaming like, oh my goodness, this is it. But from second base to third base, my leg falls off. Boop. Ah. Yeah, I eat dirt unwillingly. I didn't want to at that time. The, the kid comes over and tags me out. Why would a kid tag another kid out missing his legs? I have no idea, but <laughs> baseball in America is serious, guys. I'm telling you. It's so serious. But it was interesting, right? I, as I laid there, one leg on, one leg off, I remember looking over at my teammates and all that excitement was gone. And I can remember looking at my father and he was disappointed, not at me, but at the situation, right? And I remember being, being mad at the world. I remember being mad at the situation. And I remember questioning, like, no, this isn't fair. What did I do to deserve this? All my teammates, they have their legs. My mother, she has her legs. My brother, he's fine. Why me? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to face this? This isn't fair. All I wanted to do was to hit a home run to fit in. All I wanted to do was to make my father proud. And you mean to tell me I can't even do that? Why me? I don't deserve this. I don't get this. But in that moment, my teammates came and they picked me up. My dad came over and dusted the dirt off my chest. And as I got older, guys, and, and more trials and tribulations that I faced in my life, I realized I was asking the wrong question. I was losing my power trying to blame things, blame life, blame the situation. I realized in this life, you have two choices. It's either fault or responsibility. That's it. They don't go together. In that moment, when I failed in that moment, I was looking for fault. It's life's fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's their fault. I don't deserve this. But I decided to flip it. I decided to take control over my life. Instead of asking why me, I asked myself, well, why not me? I'm meant for this. Why not me? I'm strong enough for this. Why not me? I'm smart enough for this. I'm a true believer that everything that we go through in our lives is for a reason. And whether it's something small or something big, what we're facing today is preparing us for tomorrow. So instead of looking for fault when we face adversity, instead of looking for, oh, they did it, it was their fault, it was his fault. Right? When we face challenges and obstacles in life, I decided to take responsibility. And in that moment, the fact that my leg fell off and I let my father down and I let my teammates down, it was nobody's fault. The reality of it is, it's life. But guess what? It was my responsibility to get back up. It's my responsibility to figure this out. It's my responsibility to say, okay, Blake, you failed this time, but keep fighting on. That's our responsibility, not to blame other people. We get nowhere. 
but to take responsibility of our lives, to take responsibility of our actions, to take responsibilities of our failures, whether it's whoever's fault, and say, you know what? This is happening to me. It's happening for me, and I need this. And all those moments that I was falling down, it was getting me ready for the Paralympic Games. And I'll never forget, I qualified for the 2012 Paralympic Games. It was amazing. I got the all red USA uniform. I felt like Spider-Man. I was in there like, ah, ah, it was awesome, right? And I'll never forget, my first race was the 200 meters. And, and in that race, it was a famous Paralympian named Oscar Pistorius, if you guys have heard of him before. And the stadium sold out that night in that 200 meter race. And the guy in front of me, he knew it was my first race. So he started playing with me a little bit, right? He said, Blake. And I was just like a little kid, like, yeah, yeah, what's going on, man? This is awesome. He's like, are you ready for this race? I was like, of course. This, this is my moment. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. He said, well, great. Because they sold out the stadium in, in the London Olympic Stadium tonight for this Paralympic race. It's going to be 85,000 people out there running or watching us. I was like, okay, 85,000. It's no big. I tried to hold on, but he knew he had me, right? He had me. So he kept going. He said, okay, I'm glad you're ready because given that Oscar's running and we're running, they're, they're going to predict in about 11 million people watching us on TV tonight. <laughs> Guys, I was so nervous I couldn't feel my feet. Uh, okay, okay. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. I'm just making sure you're paying attention, right? And right before I was going on, I started feeling what I call the bubble guts. My stomach was feeling kind of weird. I started feeling nervous, right? I started feeling like, oh, I started doubting myself a little bit. I called them the, the, the bubble guts, right? I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do good, right? I think I need to use the bathroom. This is not good, right? But I explained this to my coach, and he said, oh, that's great. That's good. You, you're feeling nervous? That's perfect. I was like, what? What are you talking about? And he explained it to me, and it, and it made complete sense. He said, if you didn't prep for it, if you didn't study for it, you, you don't care about it. It has no value to you. So when you get to that moment, when you get to that presentation, when you get to that competition, it means nothing. So you'll go do it. You won't feel nothing. But reverse it. Say you dedicate your life to it day in and day out, blood, sweat, and tears. You, you can't go a day without thinking about it. You sacrifice for this moment, right, for this competition, for this presentation, whatever it is that you, you put all the work in and the energy in. It. So when you get to it, that's your body saying, hey, we need this. We want this. This is important to us. You don't need a coffee. You don't need a Red Bull. This is free energy that we have inside of us. But what happens is we, we, we kind of think this is nervous energy and think about all the negative things, right? We take that nervous energy and turns to negativity. But what we need to do in that moment is to flip it, reverse it. He said, you speak nothing but greatness into the moment. I'm going to run fast. I'm going to win. Because the reality of it is we manifest our own destiny. And that's the beautiful part about it. For me, I speak that into existence. I speak greatness into existence on my life. I'm going to run. I'm going to qualify for the Olympic Games. I'm going to break world records. I speak that. And what happens is that's out there into the universe. They can talk about it. They can hate on it. They can even laugh at me. But one thing they cannot do is take it back. And that's out there into the universe. And I slowly start conforming to it. Every day that I wake up, I say I'm going to walk. And that's out there. And I figure it out. So in that race, the gun goes off in the 200 meters, and I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And then I cross the line, and I dive across the line. And when I dive across the line, I actually win my first ever Paralympic medal in the Paralympic Games. I took a bronze medal in the 200 meters. Thank you. And then we actually come back, and, and after... I won the silver, I came back in the 400 meters behind Pistorius and I took the silver medal, right, in the, in the 400 meters. And it, it was just so amazing, like being in the Olympic Stadium, I had, I had a, a grandfather and a grandmother and I had two uncles and an aunt to come watch me compete. And it was funny, so for my granddad, he was 72 years old. He's never flew a day in his life, right? And I, and I came to him and said, hey, granddad. I'm going to compete for the Paralympic Games. Will you come watch me run? He's like, yeah, of course. I said, where's it at? He's like, oh, they're, they're in London, England. He said, okay, perfect. How long is that drive? I was like, it's like, granddad, you're going to have to fly. You're going to have to fly to get there. He said, okay, okay. 
do they serve alcohol on the plane? I was like, yes, they do. So we got granddad drunk and took him to London, right? And right before my races, I told my family, it's like, when I win, not if. Stop if. When. When I win, it's going to happen. I put it out there, not wishing, not hoping, but when, with conviction, determination, and faith, when I win, meet me in this part of the stadium, right? And we'll celebrate and we'll have fun. So I, I got my medals and I'm, I'm running to my family in the stadium and I see my dad and we're hugging and I see my mom and I see my grandmother. I see my aunts and my uncles, but I can't find granddad. Where's granddad at? And granddad's in a corner crying. Just, just tears just pouring down, right, like a two-year-old baby. And for me, at 21 years old, that was the first time I've ever seen him cry, right? And it, and it put it in perspective for me because that wasn't only my name in front of the 85,000 people and 11 million people around the world. That was his last name, right? And I could tell that he fought for me when I couldn't fight for myself. He prayed for me when I, when I couldn't get up. He loved me when I couldn't love myself. And I took that moment and I bet it in here and I put it in here. Like, that's my why. He's one of the reasons why I do it. He's one of the reasons why I wake up. So I ask you, what is your why? Why are you doing this? Why, why are you waking up each and every day with your determination, with your motivation to say more has to be done? For me, I think about my granddad. I think about the, the discrimination that I'm facing with the Olympic Committee. And I think if I'm facing this discrimination, what about the, the disabled child in Africa? What about the disabled child in China? What about the disabled child in America? They're being discriminated against. So I have to keep fighting. I have to keep pushing to be the fastest man in the world to show them I was born without legs and I could run. So imagine what you can do with your life. That's my why. And the why never stops. It never quits. It's a never-ending, seven days a week grind to make it better for the situation. And even though I, 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 I took a silver and I took a bronze, what, what color am I missing? <laughs> the gold. I want to be the best in the world. I'm not doing this to be number two or number three. In America, we, it's, it's, a, it's a movie called, called Tal Talladega Nights, and Ricky Bobby said, if you're not first, you're last. And that's how we think, right? So... I have world championships the next year. I have the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 400 meters, and the relay, right? And I prepare myself. I train so hard, and I get ready spiritually. I get ready mentally. I get ready physically. And then I go to the race in Lyon, France. And I got my first race, and it's the 100 meters. The gun goes off, and I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I cross the line. How you guys think I did? I took a silver medal. Okay. <laughs> Dang it. But I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, it's a silver medal. I, I, I've been training really, really hard, so it's, it's, it's okay. It's not really my, my next event. It was really my outfit. It was my glasses. So I switched my glasses. I switched my outfit, and I get back into the race. It's a 200-meter race, right? I took, a, I took a bronze medal at this, this event last year at the Olympic Paralympic Games. So I get into the blocks, and I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, and I cross the line. How you guys think I did? It was another silver. <laughs> So I was like, okay, it's no, no biggie. I still have two more races left. I'm not freaking out a little bit, right? But it's okay, because I, I still got the 400 meter. And I was, I was the second fastest man in the world in, in the 400 last year. So, so I got this. So we get into the blocks, and I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, and I cross the line. How you guys think I did? Yeah, I took another silver. <laughs> and at this time, I'm extremely discouraged. I'm upset. I'm mad. I had gold medal in my mind, and I kept coming up short, kept coming up short, right? But I had one more race. It was a four by 100 meter relay. It's me and three other guys as a team passing the baton around, right? And after I took three silvers, and they see me dragging back to the call room, right? They came to me and said, hey, Blake, come on, get up. We got one more race. Let's go track. Let's go train. Let's go practice. And just like that, my spirits went up, right? Just like that, my, my mindset went from losing to winning. And then I had one more race. And then, and then we got the four by 100 meter relay. And when the gun goes off and the first leg passes to the second leg, second leg, actually, would you guys rather just watch the race? That'd be pretty cool. Can we show them the race on the, on the relay? Ah! 
So French TV have gone close up on Asimani Arno. Arno Asimani. The white of France. And they're away well. And it's a great start for Brazil. Brazil closing already on Russia in the white. And the Americans closing on the French as they come round. Let's see if all the handovers are clean. It's a good handover for the USA. The Japanese on the outside. The Russians going well as well. As they come round, the Brazilians handing over now. The Russians now. And the Americans have handed over as well. This is going to be a very tight contest as they come up to the last changeover. It's the Americans in the lead. It's me. And it's the Brazilians. It's going to be the Americans absolutely storming away with it. The Americans storming away. Jared Wallace's hand over to Blake Lieber. Absolutely perfect. And Oliveira running the last leg there for Brazil. And it's a new world record for the United States. Oliveira on that last leg. Couldn't do anything. He started... Right? And not only did I win a gold medal, but we broke the world record for, for Paralympics in the 4x100 meter relay. So I love telling this story so I can just talk about my medals and my, and my life. I'm joking. I'm telling you. But the, the takeaway, right, what I learned in that moment, even though I, I trained as hard as I possibly could train, even though I prepared as much as I possibly could, could prepare, by myself, by myself, I kept coming up short kept coming up short. By myself, I couldn't get it done. For me to win the gold medal on the track, to, for me to be the best in the world, the world record holder, it takes a team. It takes a group of individuals on the same mission, the same path. That's why when, when, when Ralph came to me and said, we, this, is a, this is a day of connection. We connect people for innovation, to inspire, right, to improve. This is what it's all about. This is a team. And, I, and, and I, I'm careful who I surround myself with. And it's interesting. I mean, he was talking the other day. Somebody asked me. I was doing an interview. And they was, I was sitting on the couch. And they said, Blake, do you wish, do you ever wish that you was born with your legs? Do you ever wish that you never had to go through this? Right? And I was sitting there on the couch. And I was trying to think of something so deep. Right? I was thinking I was trying to. Nothing came to me. Nothing really came to me. And the only thing I can say is no, I don't. No. And I say I'm thankful that I was born missing both of my legs. And the reason why I'm thankful, and as of right now, the Olympic Committee said I have an unfair advantage. Can you play the last video for me, please? I realized that my adversity is my advantage. I realized long time ago, the fact that I had to fight, the fact that I had to endure from, from, from birth, the fact that I had to learn how strong I truly am, that my, that's my adversity and that's my advantage. So I encourage you, whatever challenging that you're facing today, embrace it. Whatever obstacle you're going to face tomorrow, accept it. Because you got to think, guys, the day that I was born, they told me I would never walk. <laughs> Anything is truly possible. With the right heart, with the right determination, with the right drive, with the right team, you can achieve anything. And I promise you, I promise you I'm gonna be in the Olympic Games this year. And I promise you I'm gonna win it. And before I close, I wanna end with a quote. It's from Dr. Martin Luther King, and it being MLK Day yesterday is, is truly important to me. And, and I, I say this to me daily, t say this to myself daily, weekly, monthly. And he says, if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But whatever you do, whatever you do, you must keep moving forward. Thank you guys so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs>